In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get reactions, gallery view, breakout rooms, and the best way to play music on Google Meet. Hey dancers, welcome to Dance Tech with Jay Su, the channel where dancers become more proficient and efficient in the digital space. With school starting back up, I've gotten a lot of requests on how to use Google Meet effectively when teaching. Now, I will say I do not use Google Meet on a regular basis. All the studios I teach at use Zoom, and if you are able to choose between them, I would recommend Zoom. Seriously, I can't tell you how frustrated I got when I was trying to figure out Google Meet. However, lots of schools aren't allowed to use Zoom, so in this video, I'm going to go over what I think are the most important tools for dance teachers. Reactions, grid view, playing music, and breakout rooms. I think this might be a long video, so I'll put time codes as well as links to all the extensions in the description if you'd like to jump to a particular section. If you have a better way of doing any of these things, please let me know. And if I didn't cover a feature, let me know in the comments as well. Now, a quick disclaimer, all of these things are going to be Chrome extensions. So if you are using a school computer, you might need to contact your IT department to allow your computer to install Chrome extensions. Sometimes the extensions are buggy and won't work, or you'll need to restart your meeting, which happened to me a few times as I was testing things out. Google seems to be pushing out updates really quickly now to catch up with Zoom. So depending on when you watch this video, things might actually be out of date. If that's the case, I'll do my best to keep the video description updated and if I need to I'll make a brand new video also if you want to learn how to record your Google meetings and you are not on an enterprise plan make sure you check out my other video on recording on Chromebooks number one reactions these are actually really important when you teach class if a student has their video turned off but wants to get your attention it's a really great way to do so this extension has been the most reliable for me which Makes sense because it's the most simple. It's called Nod, and once you install it, you'll see a toolbar appear on the top left-hand side of your Google Meet. From there, you can raise your hand, give a thumbs up, thumbs down, and a few other emojis that will show up on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. In order for this to work, all your students will need the extension on their computer. Number two, Grid View. This has actually changed a lot in just the last week or so as I've been researching this. Before, Google Meet only had what they called Spotlight View, which was basically speaker view in Zoom, which made it hard to see all of your students. Then they added Tile View, but that would only work with up to 16 people. Then there was a great extension by Chris Gamble called Google Meet Grid View, which worked really well, then crashed, then they came out with a fixed version, but now, if you go to change the layout of your meeting, you can have up to 49 participants show up. Just select the slider and move it up. At the time of this recording, it seems like they are rolling this feature out to accounts gradually, so if you don't see it yet, hopefully you will soon. If you need more than 49 people or that tile view just isn't doing it for you, you can still use the Chrome extension by Chris Gamble, which allows even more people to fit into a grid. Just be careful, the more people there are, the smaller the grid boxes will be. If you add the extension, just click on the grid icon on the top right of your Google Meet, and if you hover your mouse over it, there are some other options that will come up. Number three, playing music. Okay, this one might take a while. From my research, I found three ways to play music. Not all of them are great, but I'm gonna go through each one with a sound sample so you can figure out what works best with your situation. Version one, playing music from an external speaker and using your computer microphone. This is definitely the cheapest method with the lowest sound quality. Unlike Zoom, you aren't able to turn off the noise cancellation that is built into Google Meet, so your music will be really quiet and go in and out as their algorithm tries to determine if it's background noise or a person speaking. However, it's free, so if you decide to go this route, I would just recommend playing with how close your speaker is to the computer. So this is setup number one, where I have a speaker next to my laptop, and I'm going to play music, and I'm going to just talk over the music. Again, this is not great with all the um, noise cancellation stuff that Google has. You can't disable it like on Zoom. So I'm going to show you actually on my phone how loud it's playing on my end and how quietly it's translating over. So I'm going to play a song. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Version two, playing music from a Chrome tab. This is similar to sharing computer sound on Zoom, but not quite as good because there isn't a way to share your computer sound without your students seeing your screen. However, this is a new update from Google, so hopefully the next iteration of this will be just sharing computer sound. While playing music through a Google Chrome will definitely give you better sound quality, just be aware that you are going to experience desyncing issues where your music and your video are not going to be in sync. To do this, you're going to open a music player like Spotify's web player or YouTube on a Chrome tab. Then select present now, a Chrome tab, and select the tab you're going to play music from and make sure share audio is selected. Then make sure your students are in spotlight view on their end and have them pin your screen so they're not staring at your playlist the entire class. Unlike Zoom where you can spotlight yourself and it automatically puts everyone into speaker view, your students will have to do this themselves, which isn't great, but hopefully Google will change this soon. Now, because you are sharing your computer screen, I would recommend using Spotify instead of YouTube unless you've screened all the videos ahead of time and know there isn't anything inappropriate. If you do use Spotify, make sure on the bottom right next to the volume control, you select listening on this web browser. Otherwise, you won't hear your music. If you want to, you can also try using Bluetooth earbuds connected to your computer so you don't bother other people in your house. I don't know why, in theory it works, but when I tried it with my earbuds, for some reason I couldn't get it to connect with my laptop. So if it works for you, let me know in the comments. Oh, let's try this again, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is me sharing my Chrome tab. I have Spotify on, and actually important note, I did um, connect my laptop to my router with an ethernet cable because we were having some spotty um, music issues. So now I'm gonna play uh, music from Spotify and let's see how it goes. Actually, now I'm going to put this to the side here and put my students on the other side so I can still see everyone play the music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, we jump. And down. <laughs> Version three, using a USB mixer and wireless microphone. If you've seen my video on best audio setups for Zoom, this is the same as version five. I go really in depth in that video, so I'm not going to do the same here. If you're interested, I've included a link in the video description that will take you to that part of the video. But here's the abbreviated version. You're going to use a wireless microphone for your voice and your phone or another audio device to play music, all connected to a USB mixer that is then connected to your computer. This gives the best sound quality and makes sure your video and audio stay in sync. I personally use the Behringer Zenix 502 USB mixer with a Kimafun wireless microphone and I'll have links for everything in the description if you'd like to check them out. Okay, this is the last setup. This is with the USB mixer with the, um, wireless microphone plugged into that. I have the mixer plugged into my speaker here and my iPad is plugged into the mixer to play music. So hopefully you can already hear the difference in audio when I'm talking. But now when I play music, here we go. Is that volume okay, Emily? Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yeah, so I think hopefully you can hear that this is much better. Obviously, it's a lot more tech setup, but once you have everything plugged in, it works really well. Number four, breakout rooms. This extension takes a little prep work in the beginning, but it works really well once you have it all set up and will save you a lot of time when you're actually teaching class. Instead of true breakout rooms like you have in Zoom, you're basically creating multiple Google Meet sessions ahead of time, but then linking them through this extension by Robert Hudak. He also has a bunch of video tutorials on how to use the extension on his YouTube channel. So if there's something I don't cover in this video, go check it out and see if there are answers to your questions there. But here are the basics. All right, once you have added the Google Meet breakout room extension. You're going to go and open it up and it's going to take you to this window. Now again, basically what you're doing is you are creating multiple meetings ahead of time, but then this lets you control them when it's time for class to start. 
So under courses, you're gonna create all the different classes you have that you want breakout rooms for. So for example, this is my demo class, but I can go here plus, and now let's go. Whatever you want, and you're gonna save it. Now under rooms, this is where you make all of the individual meetings ahead of time and link it to each course. So here I'm under demo class, so I'm gonna go here, go to my new hip hop one class, and now let's make some Google meetings. So now we're gonna copy this link under main and save. So now this is our main meeting link that all of your students would meet you in first as your main classroom. Now, we're gonna close that. The new one, let's go for three breakout rooms for this demo. Gonna add a room, you can call it whatever you want. Save it. Okay, so we've created all of our breakout rooms and we have our main session. Now just to show you over here, you can select it so all of the meetings open up as separate windows or as tabs, whichever one works better for your flow. And you can customize it with all of these things here that I'm not gonna get into, but you can experiment on your own. So for now, I'm gonna keep it as tiles so I can show you something uh, over here. Now, this is your main controller. This lets you jump between your different rooms and this lets you broadcast to all of your rooms, which is really great. Once you have all of your meetings set, you're gonna go to start class. You're gonna select how many breakout rooms you want. So I created three, but maybe you only want one. So I could do one, but let's do all three. And now I'm gonna open up my main room. I see here it says main. Oopsies. All right, so now we're in, oh, and this is weird, hold on. So now we've got to re refresh this. There we go. Okay, so now this is our main room. So all of our students are here. We're in the middle of class, right? Now, if it's time for our breakout rooms, you would go over here, open breakout rooms. And now you'll see all of them are opening up. Now, from here, you can see I'm currently in the main room, but if I wanted to, I could jump over, and let's turn my camera on. I can jump over to breakout room one, and now I'm in number one. Breakout room two, number two, number three. So you can monitor all of your students at the same time, but if you want to go to a specific room, you can use this. Or if you want to broadcast to all of them, say, hey, you have five minutes left. Now I can go to all breakout rooms, unmute myself, Hey everyone, just so you know, you have five minutes left or do whatever you need to do. Turn it back off. And now I'm back in, I can go back to the rooms or I can go back to the main room and wait for them. And you'll see here, they're all named with the tab so you know which room is which. It's really, really cool. Now to send your students, there are a couple different ways. Um, and if you read these instructions, it lays it out for you, but basically, there are ways to um, assign students, but you would just copy these links. You can put in the chat, you can give it to them ahead of time, whatever it is. But this way they have the links to the different rooms that they need to go to. And that is basically it for Google Meet breakout rooms. I mean, Robert Hudduck did an amazing job with this. So if you use this, if you think it's helpful, definitely go to um, the extension page and leave a review and show him some love there. Cause I, don't, I can't imagine how much work this took to make this and it's free. He's not charging people for this. And again, if you need more help, uh, he has a YouTube channel with tutorials on a lot of uh, specific things that I think people have asked him for. So make sure you check that out as well. I will put that in the description below. Whew, that is it for this video, everyone. I hope you found it helpful. If you are teaching on Google Meet, good luck. 
Let me know in the comments how it is going, if there are other questions that I can help answer and research. If you have questions on how to record your Zoom or Google Meet call, check out my video on that, which will be in the end cards in a moment. And make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button so you know when new videos come out, and I'll see you next time. Five, six, seven, eight.